So as I said last week, um, these vlog episodes are kind of a chance just to get to know me a little bit better uh, since you're watching so many of the videos. Um, so that was a little slideshow of where I live. So I live in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, and um, that's on the Pacific Ocean. That's on the west coast of Canada. And Victoria is located on Vancouver Island, which is a, a very large island, like it takes seven hours to drive up. It's quite large. It's not near Vancouver specifically. Vancouver is about an hour and a half ferry ride away and a um, bit of a drive as well. Um, but the island has lots of different towns on it, Victoria being the, the biggest one in the capital of British Columbia. So um, other things going on, um, in about two weeks, I'm heading up to the Western Canada Music Awards. Um, the trio I play in, the Victoria Guitar Trio, has this album out um, called Concentric Rings, and there's a link for that under the YouTube video. And it's all contemporary new music by Canadian composers. So um, all kind of modern stuff. Some of it, most of it was commissioned by us. Um, and um, so we're up for Best Classical Artist of the Year, um, along with some other great groups, including the, the um, Winnipeg Symphony, or the Regina Symphony, I forget. Um, so that's something that's coming up. Um, another thing is this week is the Victoria Festival of Authors. And I'm married to Aaron Francis Fisher, who teaches piano at the, at the Victoria Conservatory, and um, also has this nice book out. Um, she's also an author. She has a master's in writing and does some teaching and writing as well. Um, that Tiny Life. So if you're looking for some good literature, um, check out her book. I have links for it under the YouTube video as well. And she's doing some um, readings and uh, doing a panel with some other authors in the festival. So I'm taking in lots of literature this week, which is nice. Um, also some music though, such as the early music concert tonight that I'm going to. But um, it's just a little bit about what I've been up to in Victoria. And um, I teach at the Victoria Conservatory of Music here in Victoria. And, um, which is, and I have a nice big studio of classical guitar students, mostly kids. Um, and teens, um, and I occasionally teach post-secondary students there, and of course hobbyist adults as well. Um, and there's six faculty members. There's there's six faculty members at the conservatory. There's no guitar department or like department head or anything, but we're we're all part of the strings department at the conservatory. So it's kind of cool to have like a place to go, go to work, and um, and to interact with some of the other faculty um, there. So um, another thing I wanted to talk about today is just um, a little bit about what I've been teaching my students. So this week I've really been focusing on organizing both hands and keeping things um, very simple and straightforward and easy, um, which means breaking down your pieces sometimes and also making a connection between technique and your repertoire. Um, and I put a separate video out on my YouTube channel um, about this, about a left hand position kind of staying organized in terms of position playing. So go watch that and check that out. But just to kind of summarize what I've been doing with my students is um, keeping both hands really organized. So in the left hand, we're always doing these, um, and you can watch the other video, but we're always doing like technique that is based on position playing, right? One finger per fret, which is generally an easy, like when you have a scale um, within a position, Within a position, it's pretty easy, like very minimal movement. If your fingers are like over top of the frets like this, you just kind of execute the material. It's just like little button pushing with the fingers, right? It's very compact, very economic. Um, it's very easy. Now, when you throw a shift into the mix, that's when it gets a little bit more wonky and students tend to, their technique tends to kind of go off the rails sometimes. So what we've been working on is breaking it into very clear sections. Then carefully shifting, setting up. And all my students have no problem with that, of course, because staying in position is easy. And then carefully shift. But it's that shift where things go wonky. So sometimes like students, their thumb legs behind, or they reach out their fingers, or they change their hand position because they're reaching out like this. Um, what I've been teaching them is just really trying to organize their hand, do a clean shift, take as much time as they need, 
and then doing the next section, and then you piece it together. Um, same thing in your pieces. If you have a piece, um, like... Um, if you have a piece like that, um, things can go wrong all over the place. But if you practice it in positions very carefully, it's actually really easy to play, right? Sorry. That's easy. That's easy. That's easy. And that's pretty easy. It's the shifts that are difficult, right? That's where things usually go wrong. So that's um, what we've been tackling on is making sure we practice the individual positions um, very carefully to make sure that it's easy to play and we just do it. And then, um, and then the student just has to work on, on getting themselves from point A to point B as cleanly as possible. And um, once students learn about that, and then they attach that idea to clean shifts and phrasing and legato and musicality, then their job becomes much more easy from a technical standpoint. They're just doing this easy thing here, then this easy thing here, then this easy thing here, and this easy thing here, and then they're done. Um, as opposed to kind of like moving from one place to the other and letting it fall apart as they go. You practice it individually, and then you piece it together. And that generally results in, in them believing and conceiving of the piece as being more easy and and also them just playing much more cleanly and also all their attention just has to be on the shift the individual sections are easy then so i, I it tends to make them much better at the pieces and and give them a much better attitude towards studying their pieces because it doesn't seem as hard anymore right same thing goes for the right hand um you know doing like individual sections that was A, M, I, well, and alternating M, I, but, and then the same thing here, A, M. So it's the same right hand fingering in both sections. Same thing goes for an easier piece, right? It doesn't matter what piece you're playing. The right hand in there is the same the whole time. So um, we often will um, practice our pieces with the right hand only. So taking the notes, the strings that you would normally play, and just practicing it with open strings until their right hand really knows what to do and can do it very automatically, right? Um, and also just practicing in your technique, tons of open string exercises. My new technique book that's coming out in a month or longer um, but uh, it has like a 100 exercises for the right hand which are just on open strings all open strings um, and it's just so important to just get that right hand really working um, so you can if you're subscribed to my email newsletter uh, you'll see a note about that technique book coming up but it's uh, my biggest project yet it's like a good 100 pages of technique and there's gonna be tons of videos for it and all, all that stuff so um, that's kind of what I've been up to and what I've been teaching. And uh, now I'll kind of like do a little bit of practicing of some Jacques K2 for you. So I'll play you something that I've been working on. Um, this is the Nocturne from Jacques K2's Opus 41, Suite for Guitar. Um, last week I played the Prelude. Um, this week I'm going to go through kind of like section by section of the Nocturne. And maybe I'll just tell you before each section um, what it is I'm kind of working towards and, and going for. And then at a later date, uh, maybe I can play the, the whole movement straight through uh, when it's ready. So the first section is very canonic in nature. There's lots of imitation that happens between the different voices. And the dynamic level is all kind of like soft. And the thing I'm working on most is trying to get the phrasing across um, and the slow, soft tempo, but also kind of keep the momentum um, growing and moving forward, um, which is a little bit challenging in this particular uh, piece. But this will be the first section, then I'll, I'll stop and talk about the next one.
section. So this next section, it really starts to heat up a little bit. There's constant eighth notes happening, so it's um, starting to really pick up, and there's still some imitative uh, work going on for sure, but the voices, they, um, they exchange a lot more, uh, making it kind of exceedingly difficult in the left hand um, a little bit. So keeping the, the dynamic level down and also dealing with the chord changes and all the activity is uh, a lot more challenging than I, I thought it would be at first. And so I'm just trying to kind of keep it in control and suppressed, but also bring out all the lines nicely. So it's a challenge and uh, certainly uh, I'm going to continue working on that. See at the end of that section, it gets kind of intense for the fingering. Made a couple mistakes there. This chord just kills me because there's an open E at the top, so you really have to like get a whole bunch of fingers crunched in and bend over that first finger to get that open E. It's not that bad in isolation, but. Once the tension builds up a little bit in the hand, it's pretty tough to get. Just have to practice it super slow. Um, the next section um, is very mysterious and very tasto and very suppressed again. Um, it can be a pretty magical moment in the piece, I think. Um, but again, I just have to make sure that I'm keeping it all um, contained and under control and also keeping the musical mood and the mysteriousness and the legato really going, which is a, a challenge. It's a deceivingly difficult little section because it's so um, there's all those like kind of like jumpy chords, and uh, but mainly just because the mood is so specific, it's um, so um, tasto and legato and mysterious and soft that um, it's it's tough to put that all together. Sometimes it's easier just to play like extroverted music, but in this one, keeping it all contained is the, is a real challenge. So um, hopefully I can play that for you again. 
um, and play the whole movement straight through after a little, little bit more practice. So hope you enjoyed the vlog episode this week and there'll be more of them, but there'll also be the, the normal lessons and repertoire on the channel as usual.